Lack of a proper warm-up routine is a common cause of injury. Welcome to the Sound of Movement podcast. Today, we are going to unpack the ultimate warm-up routine and show you how to build a routine specific to your needs. We're also going to talk about the mistakes people make and why warm-up is so essential. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. Like Vasquez said in Aliens, let's rock. If you're new to the tribe, we've got Rich behind the mix. Across the table from me is Nalesh and Will. And my name is Yanni Bormeister. Together we are Unity Gym and ADPT Physio, experts at turning driven people into athletes. This episode is brought to you by the Unified Movement System, the only online program effectively balancing strength, flexibility, and fitness so you can unleash your inner athlete. Of course, get daily coaching by us plus our epic foundations prep program and revolutionary structural balance blueprint to create your ideal program and optimize your performance. As a valued listener, you can always use the link in the description to get your first month free. It'll be up after the podcast goes live. We're also uh, excited to announce that for the next 24 hours, you can still grab our epic flash launch sale for our phase five at home workouts. It's 29 bucks. It's going to revert to the $97 price at midnight tonight. So get yourself in there. The tribe has been crushing these workouts for the last two weeks. It is a lot of fun. Before we get started, warm welcome. If you're on the live stream in the YouTube channel, remember if you like what you see, smash that like button. If you like, if you really like what you see, give us a subscribe. And uh, we want to send some love back to our UMS Movement Mastermind Facebook group. It's free to join that group. Just search for UMS Movement Mastermind. And of course, lastly, massive shout out to everyone listening on the Sound of Movement podcast. How you boys doing? Going well. How are you? Really good, thanks, mate. Really good. Yeah. Really oh, good. I just finished a workout, so I'm absolutely knackered, <laughs> and I'm sitting here and shuffling around. I don't really get comfortable. So, Will, if if you if you haven't uh, if you haven't met uh, everyone here, Will is our gym manager. Uh, it took us years to find someone who was remotely the same color as our branding. And uh, <laughs> once, once we got him, we never let him go. Uh, <laughs> uh, and and, and yeah. Nilesh is the, uh, is the co-founder of ADPT Physio and also a performance physio for the GWS Giants here in Sydney. Of course, we are in lockdown at the moment. So uh, Nilesh has, uh, has uh, very, very strategic strategically remained in Sydney instead of going into the players hub what's that like brother um yeah it's a good chess play from me um mm. so I missed the border closure which was at 1am yep. um, my phone rang I didn't pick up so <laughs> um, no 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 but like yeah um obviously um everyone's in the hub which obviously is tough because you've got 44 players and well, for fifty percent less staff yeah um but being in Sydney is good because I've got a little one I can put my head down bum up and just do stuff so that's good just work and actually hard. Yeah, yeah have some some vinos at home every night actually just standard, yeah. Standard, yeah. Um, will um which got to stop so that's right and it's uh it's yeah it's full on right now in sydney we got um we got a lot of uh a lot of businesses shut uh we are <coughs> socially distancing ourselves we're masking up in the gym here all the production crew are masked up we're producing our at home workouts uh to our gym tribe and uh We've released it to the public, which is awesome. Give some shout outs here. We've got a lot of people on the live stream. <laughs> no one, no one yeah. can defeat Andy Lawson. Uh, uh, we, we're here discussing how he is able to get the comments up so quickly. We've got Patrick Offner on the stream as well. Patrick is a uh, surgeon and, and I believe an orthopedic surgeon. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Patrick. Uh, he's saying, I've got no sound. Have you actually started yet? No, no that was from before. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, we always have the countdown up there for uh, a few minutes to allow the um, the notifications to go out. So if you've clicked that notification bell when you're a subscriber, then you will get notified. Uh, we've also got uh, Vinny Brown on the stream. Hello, Vinny. Saying, hi, guys. We have to catch the podcast replay as it's late here in the US. Got to get a full eight hours sleep. Yes, prioritize that my brother mm -hmm. he's a trauma critical care surgeon Patrick Offner cool Jeez. very very cool seen some good stories you would, yeah you'd yeah. have some great stories okay so remember tribe hit that like button let's get into it now the first thing we want to cover today is essentially the importance of a warm-up 
Uh, and, you know, we commonly see people uh, at either ends of the spectrum, either they're overdoing a warm up or worse, underdoing a warm up. And the, the, the key that we want you guys to understand here is that the warm up is not the workout. So overdoing the warm up is almost as bad as underdoing a warm up because what it's going to do is it's going to negate from or inhibit your ability to perform in your workout. And uh, worse, it's really just a waste of time, you know. And we used to fall victim to this. Uh, when we first started the UMS, our warm up ran for about 20 minutes, 22 minutes. Essentially, it was our 18 minute stretch routine that you guys, or 18 minute mobility routine that you can actually purchase now as a standalone uh, program. Uh, and it was really great. It delivered a great result, but we started to hang out with guys who were just better than us at, at calisthenics and at certain things. And, you know, it came quite obvious that we were just warming up for too long, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, um, I'm sure you, uh, you, you'd have a pretty, um, solid routine, you boys for your footy players. What is the warm up in the footy for the footy? Yeah. Like? Yeah. Um, I think on the back of what you were saying it's a, there's a fine line between warm up and turning the warm up into a workout yep. um, because then guys are trying to train going oh wait we're training now yep. um, but I think the routine of the Giants it, it's funny it follows a similar philosophy it's here it's, it's a, there's a mobility focus there's an activation focus and there's a function focus yep. um, and that you know prim primarily takes 15-20 minutes and then roll into a session yep. um, remember it's 44 players it has to take for 15 18 yeah 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 sorry 15 to 20 minutes yep and their kids yep it's talking and so <laughs> forth so um but if you it's it's bulked up that way as well like i said mobility focus activation prep focus and then function focus yep. when the kicks come in run throughs come in footy style stuff come in so it's, it's got the same pillars that we play so that's how we kind of put it together is the question is the warm-up for a uh, training session the same or different to a game day warm-up um, it changes. It changes. Yeah. So yeah. game day would be obviously there's a lot more contact base. Yeah. A lot more firing that nervous system. Firing the nervous bracing. Yep. Getting ready. Correct. Everything's at gear six. Yep. yep. Um, we're ready to roll. We got ready to go to war basically, yeah, right? Yeah, um, yeah. A training thing is narrowed down a bit. There's laughs. There's some games. You know, people yep. you know going, oh, remember the weekend you missed the ball. Yeah. Um, so that that's big contrast <laughs> there. I think the mindset <laughs> contrast is a bit of big change. Yep. Um massive yep. change come to the weekend but obviously being a contact sport massive contact focus come the weekend yeah right there is a com con contact focus come training because you the yep. you apply the way you train right yep. so or train was, the way you play it i was actually oh. just being treated yeah. by nalesh a couple of hours ago for a, a rib uh, issue i've got going on and uh the um the you know I, I said to Nalesh, what are the what are the what's the physicality of the the players like in comparison to people like myself you know what's the rig like and uh, the, the the difference Slowly. is you know yeah I might I might uh, I might be as big as some of the professional athletes but the the, the conditioning level is on a different st level you know the condi the state of conditioning and physical preparedness is on a different level and although I played rugby league for many many years and then I played uh, soccer for many many years and I was a an, a competitive boxer for on and off for 16 years if i ran out on a footy field right now i'd take one or two hits and i'd be carried off on a stretcher you yeah. know like mm. you just you just don't have that level of conditioning and it's funny i remember uh, a couple of years back uh new year's eve a bunch of my mates went and stayed on a friend's farm and one of my mates is a, a professional uh, rugby mm. uh, referee now but he played rugby for mossman for many many years many oh, yeah. years he was quite good and uh, we just, we got into a bit of a touch footy game or something and it's sort of, you know, a bunch of boys having a couple of beers, it escalates to, you know, touch for three seconds, then you can drop the shoulder in and then you're allowed to lift them and, you know, and I, I put a bit of a hit on my mate and uh, and just because I train a lot in the gym and I'm a, and, and, and I was sort of boxing at the time, so I was sort of a little bit more adverse to taking hits. Uh, I just wailed him, you know, and I just kind of thought because he played rugby for so long. But we had this chat. Once you stop, you get soft real quick, you know. It's not conditioned. Yeah. You're not head conditioned. Yeah. You're not it's ready for everything. it, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and this is why uh, um, we're going to talk about the two reasons why you need to um, maybe manipulate the warm up a little bit. Um, uh, this sort of tips onto one of those, um, which is that, you know, as you get less and less conditioned, you need to prepare more and more for a workout, you know, and uh, and especially if you're going to play a contact sport, exactly right. uh, you just get more and more soft as you, as you, as you get older, really, I guess, you know. Uh, but the first thing we want to just quickly really, really reinforce and highlight are the three variables or the three components of a good warm up of an uh, ultimate warm up routine that should always remain the same. 
Uh, now, when I say remain the same, I choose those words carefully because they're going to be spe uh, specific to what you're about to do. You know, and so Nilesh said before they do some skills drilling that are specific to playing Australian rules football, kicking drills, sprinting Correct. drills, change of direction drills. I can imagine. I'm sure Will, when you play rugby, Will actually still plays rugby, uh, rugby union. You'd mm. you'd be doing drills specific to your footy for your yeah. game. You know, you do some ruck drills, warm up the shoulders, things like that. Yeah. Um, but in, in Unity Gym, it's easy for us because we know exactly what the individual or athlete is about to be um, exposed to, this type of stimulus. So we've created a, a unified uh, warm up, one for the upper body leg workout days and one for the lower body leg, uh, uh, sorry, upper body uh, workout days, one for the lower body workout days. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's kind of easy for us. And, and the workout's always the same. It always starts with 60 seconds of high intensity cardio, as hard as you can go. And the purpose for that is to increase and upregulate blood flow. What that does is it, it uh, gets the body warm, it gets the body a bit more limber, it, uh, it saturates the joints with synovial fluid so that you're, you, you know, you're lubricated, you're ready to rock. And then also it increases the nervous system's firing rate. So it makes you more uh, ready, more tactile. Uh, the, the muscles are gonna fire. It turns the PowerPoint on. That's right, exactly. Yeah, very well said. Uh, and that is always the start of a warm up. That and uh, that that should remain the same no matter who you are, no matter how old you are. Then uh, the next thing that we do is mo mobility drills specific to what you're about to do. This isn't stretching, and a lot of people get this wrong. You know, a lot of people think, okay, now I'm going to limber up for the workout. But if you're about to go for a run, you, the last thing you want is your legs loose. You know, if you're about to play footy, the last thing you want is your shoulders or your hips or whatever really loose, you know, because you're about to ask of it to, to be as tight as humanly possible, to take hits, to sprint, to do all this sort of stuff. Mobility and flexibility, this is where the two differ. You know, mobility is really good. That's gonna take your joints through full range of movement under load actively. So your body is controlling the weight, unlike lying and, and, and sitting in a stretch for a prolonged period of time, you know. Uh, but this is where it needs to be really specific. You know, it needs to be specific to what you're about to do. If you're about to do a squat session, don't go doing mobility on other parts of the body that aren't related to the squat, you know, and vice versa. And then finally, uh, the last component to every warm up a staple is uh, positioning, body positioning, drilling. So mm -hmm. really activating the muscles and the areas of the body uh, that need to be fired up. And so we use core body positioning drills, hollow body body positioning drills. We use hanging, uh, which really upregulates the uh, rotator cuff muscles and things like that. Uh, and this is where, yeah, again, it needs to be pretty specific to what you're about to do, you know. And if you're going to play footy, then you'll do positioning that's good for that, you know. And, uh, and, and sort of skills drills that, that might, you know, like you might kick some balls or, or, or handball some balls to each other, whatever. What yeah. would you guys do? Yeah, well, I think you're spot on. Like, I think you guys are addressing, um, you know, strength at length yep. within the warm-up drill. You know, you have strength and shortened ranges. You've got... your in terms of trunk, compression strength, rotation strength, address, addressing all that. And they're the same pillars we would go by addressing. So guys would come in doing hip mobility and in the, again, in a running specific way. Yep. Um, adductor activation, glute activation in a run specific way. Yep. Um, if there's handball stuff, you, you get really good at doing what you get good good at doing. You yep. handball more, your yep. technique prep. Change of direction comes in, your technique prep as yep. a warm-up drill, yep. not go, you don't go 100% because you're going to be doing it at training. Yeah, so it's a yeah, build-up yeah. to everything. So same philosophy we follow. Yep. Um, so we dial in that way, build up the intensity and the warm-up changes in a progressive way because again, with a warm-up, everyone gets better at it. Yep. Everyone becomes accustomed to it. You progress it and that also lines in with your main program as well. So yeah. 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 Same feels, I reckon. Yeah. And in, in, in my, I remember in my old footy days, like we played um, uh, like low division soccer uh and there was practically no warm-up like we used to go for mm. a little bit of a jog we might have done two laps isn't it yeah two laps <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's right a couple of up and backs maybe a tiny bit of passing you know and funnily enough 
we had an alarming, like by by the game four in the season, half of our team was sidelined with strained hammies. Mm. And I used to often see, and I used to try to say, guys, what are you doing? Don't stretch your hammies before the game. Oh yeah, but my hammy's a bit tight. You know, I'm like, yeah, don't do some dynamic work or some ballistic work yeah, yeah, or some yeah. Nordics or upregulate it, you know, but don't don't sit there stretching your hammies. That's why you're gonna go out and strain it, you know? and. Mm. And uh, I used to just laugh because there was just no structure. And it was one of my mates that was the coach and you know, no one really knew what they were doing. Um, but what was it like? For, what's it like for you guys um, playing yeah. rugby? With, with our um, rugby team, I play for the mighty Chatswood Stags, so big shout out. <laughs> no, big shout out, Chatty Stags. Um, you can't get a lower division than Division 6 in Subbies Rugby. But um, <laughs> yeah, our warm ups are pretty good. But one of the biggest beefs I have at rugby training is that everyone goes and plays touch for 30 minutes before we do our warm up and then get into training yeah. and they go yeah it's pretty cold it's like 6 30 at night it's the middle of winter and they just kind of like bop around but then someone hits a gap and everyone knows that they're meant to be taking it easy but they hit this gap and especially at the start of the season yeah hamstrings left right and center yeah it's yeah. a really common injury yeah and, uh, people just aren't aware of what they're what they need to do first yeah that's yeah. right. Do you guys do Nordics and um, and Copenhagen's yes. for your boys? Yes. Yeah. Um, we, we do it within... So the way we, we philosophize is what's important is it strength important or training important? So yeah. they train first and they'll do strength after. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's the priority. Yeah. Um, I, I know there's ways in sport where Copenhagen's Nordic exposures are done within training on the back end of training or the start of training. Or off-season. Um, off-season, yeah. yeah. Off-season. So our, our ones are very gym-based. Yep. Um, but yes, we, we do because we know... It bulletproofs your hammies. Yeah. It bulletproofs your adductors, especially in change direction sport. Yeah. Running sport and yeah. reactive sport. So yeah. Yeah. We definitely right. do that. That's our go to. Um, but it's a conversation for another day. Um, are they the qu- are they the two best exercises for it? We don't know. Yeah. 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 Look, I, it's, they're pretty good. They're it's, pretty good. it's interesting because after I had my knee reconstruction uh, from a really bad soccer injury, I had a, a, a an impact trauma that dislocated the knee and did a whole bunch of damage. Won't go into it. But that I, I had a hamstring graft to repair the damage, which means that they actually harvest one of the hamstring tendons and, and, and turn that into a new ligament and drill yeah. it and feed it through the bones. And it's pretty it's a pretty amazing operation. I've watched the operation perform, not on myself, or just a video. And um, the but what it does is it overnight by 30 percent reduces the um, the strength of that hamstring that hamstring body you've got three tendons and one of them's practically gone Mm -hmm. that makes up about 30 percent of the the muscle body and you can feel it there's a huge gap there a huge hole and um one of the problems you have during your rehab is as you start to introduce sprint work and even swimming and things like that you just keep re-tearing the hamstrings it's and it's phenomenal how much i tore my hammy uh on my path to strength again you know um and so I just can't, and that's just because I had weak hamstrings. I can't imagine what it's like to have weak hamstrings because I've strengthened them since adolescence. You know, I've done yeah, deadlifts yeah. And, and heavy uh, Romanians and Nordics and things like that. So I've always had quite robust mm. leg muscles, you know, but some of the guys that I used to play football with, oh, mate, they were made of cotton wool, you know, like yeah, yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah. And I just, you just think, man, you've got to get out and do some strength work. I can't even imagine running around on a footy field, not yeah. having done a bit of strength work, not yeah. having a bit of swole and all it, it does is bulletproofs you gives you that insurance policy that you need yeah absolutely um, which um, I think people just jump on what looks cool yeah what, what Instagram tries to sell you yeah that's but, right you know if you use what's actually been proven not with just evidence but clinical like yeah. us doing it us getting the bang out of it too so yeah so I guess you could kind of say one of the best warm ups that you can ever do for any sport um, is just to get a bit of strength going in the gym you know <laughs> like build some mass yeah yep. get, get a base swole. get a build base, a base. Get yeah swole, exactly exactly so the, the the last let's move on to what I want to get to which is the final two reasons why you would ever change a warm up uh, uh, adapt a warm up you've got this blueprint you've got those three components that we discussed before you've got your blood flow work which we do in the unified movement system we do 60 seconds of a high in- uh, intense sprint horizontal running burpees air squats air jumps whatever you want to do to get the heart rate right up get the blood flowing get the joints lubricated get the uh, nervous system switched on it's like that on switch the power switch that uh, that Nilesh spoke about before then from there we do our mobility uh, drills which are specific to the workout that's about to come then we do our body positioning drills which is to fire up the nervous system get the core muscles going get your rotator cuff going get all the muscles that are really involved in the stability and integrity of every joint fired up and ready to ready to rock Mm -hmm. 
And then finally, we do a series of warm up sets specific to the exercises we're doing. And that's mm. your skill work, okay? That's drilling the skills. In footy, you do kicks or runs or whatever it is specific to the sport you're doing. In boxing, we start to th throw some punches, you know? Mm. Uh, and, and that's our warm up, that's our blueprint. And that generally doesn't change unless you tick one of these two boxes. One is age. Age is a big factor in warming up. The older you get, the longer it takes for your body to actually warm up. So you, 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 and most people will relate to this. When you're in your 20s and you hit the gym, what was your warm up? A couple of air circles with Maxing your shoulders. Out. That was it, you know, and bang, you'd be hitting oh, no. a bench press at 100 kilos, um, you know, yeah. and you can kind of get away with it. What was a dumbbell? I used to get a dumbbell and do these ones. Yeah, you oh, just yeah, do those ones a little bit, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, man, my, wa my warm up That's literally, my bench warm -up. <laughs> yeah, my warm up. At, in my 20s was walk, the walk up the stairs to the weights room. That was it. I was like ready to rock, yeah. you know. And, and and you can kind of get away with that at that point because um, you, your body is just so damn resilient. You're turning over, the cellular turnover in your body is happening at such a rapid rate. The hormone levels are peaking. And, uh, and if you hurt yourself, you kind of don't know about it half the time and you just recover. As you get older, and, and you know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm still a young buck at 41, but you, I, I say after the age of 30, the warm up becomes critical. It's an important part of the workout. After the age of 40, you gotta really start getting creative with your warm up because if mm. you skip it or you shorten it, you, you hurt yourself so many times. I do it all the time. After the age of 50, the warm up needs to start really lengthening it to, to suit, like you need to warm up until you feel warm. Mm. You can't rush it, you know? And that sort of gets more and more important as we move forward. So that's the first variable. The what second- What do you feel over 50? What do you feel over- Because I'm 30 and I swear to God, I get <laughs> out of bed and I'm walking around and my knees are shot. <laughs> oh man. Ask Patrick. I think Patrick's, uh, Patrick, you're over 50. How does it feel? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't actually know if that's true. I'd like, you can, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we, we, Clayton's saying, finally caught on live. You. Um, and we've got Enzo Velez uh, from, uh, from, from Argentina. I don't know what you've said there, but it sounds cool. Um, anyway, uh, maybe someone can type it into Google. Um, we got, we got a good little tribe on here watching live. Now, uh, what we were, uh, Patrick often saying 66 years old and warm up much longer than the 10 minutes. Yeah, that's yep. it. That's it. Spot on. Same and, 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 and right. You should Patrick, you know, because it really becomes a matter of you warm up until you feel ready for the workout at that point. Uh, if you rush it, man, it's detrimental, you know? And so, yes, your workouts need to take a little longer. Like they're not going to be as efficient, but man, it's worth it. You know, like, what are we here for? And, and, and I love, uh, cause uh, Patrick at 66, he's still, he's got a rig, man. Like I've seen Patrick is part of our UMS online coaching group. Uh, and he posts videos all the time for critique and, and technique optimization. And he's got a rig. I'll be stoked if I'm looking like that at 66 years old. So well yeah, done, man. Show yeah, what you got. <laughs> absolutely. So the second reason that you would manipulate or change up a warm up routine is very specific. And this is why I wanted Nilesh here and also Will, because Will's actually doing some of this stuff is if you've got an injury or you're working through a, a, a overcoming an issue in your body, a compromise in your body. I've seen um, both Will, myself uh, and uh, Rich, uh, Rad all work as patients of Nilesh. Uh, he was out there showing me some drills that I'm going to be doing as part of my warm ups now because of this rib thing. I've got a, a rib that's been busted uh, in boxing many, many years ago that just moves around a bit too much. I think the cartilage has probably been cracked and damaged and it's never really healed properly. And every once in a while when I lift heavy, uh, it just seems to really flare up and aggravate and cause me a whole bunch of harm. And and uh, yeah, Nilesh has found some deficiencies in my training that where I can where I can level up, and he's he's prescribed a couple of muscle activation um, uh, drills to do prior to my workouts. And this is another area that you need to take into consideration if you're sporting an issue like myself right now, like Will. I've spotted Will out on the gym floor doing uh, quad activation drills mm -hmm. the other day. Yeah. Um, so why don't you explain what we're, what you're doing, what you're prescribing? Yeah, I think I think I think it all starts at habit. Um, Will was really bad at it three weeks ago Still and out. he's um, come through. No, but like, <laughs> I think all these stuff where, where um, the physio space comes in is I think guys, um, you know, you have a deficiency, an injury or a pre-existing injury or a compromised joint, however, however you want to label it. I think a little bit of time needs to go into primer or activation or mm. switching the switch on, um, you know, yep. and waking things up. And 
it takes away that, oh, you know, my squats, I can't go deep. I'm getting some an- knee pain. Mm. And you turn around and you, you come into a consult and you go to the physio, tell them, and you're like, oh, have you done your quad activation? Have you done this? Have you primed up? No. Um, I think if you spend those times, you, like it goes back to the philosophy you've highlighted, it's central nervous system, heart rate, get the joints going, strength at length, yeah, addressing all those things. Yep. And as physios, it's the same philosophy, same principles we follow as well. They're the things you want to be addressing. Yeah. Um, I think if you come see me and just an example, like with Rad, um, Yanni, I see Rad too much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rad's, Rad's a physio. Sorry, sorry Rad. Um, right. I'm, I'm Rad. <laughs> um, you know, we've gone through a mobility drill. Um, yep. You saw that. Yep. We've gone through a activation and a movement drill, which we put in two in one. You saw that. And it goes back to the philosophy we do here at Unity and we do obviously at ADPT. Mobility, activation, function. Yeah. And I think that's how your warm up should be set up within the rehab space too. So Will, as an example, has got some knee pain. He he has trouble squatting. Mm -hmm. What are you doing for your warm up? Yeah. I mean, I've had years of either tendinopathy or patellofemoral pain and whatever it is we're fixing it but um at the moment i'm just doing a vmo activation and a glute activation and that's all i need to do and then the warm-up to be ready to actually move efficiently. how, how long does that take you uh i spent a bit too long on the the assault bike but honestly the whole thing would take 12 minutes yeah including the warm-up um so. and we've, we've already straight away ticked off two joints or two areas that he's needed again specific yep. to what he needs squat mm. knees glutes and just overall function, right? Yeah. Um, likewise for you, you're getting some rotational stuff with your rib. Yep. We're creating some stability. Again, I'm trying to highlight how functional and specific it needs to be. Yep. You're trying to create some rotational strength for you. Yep. So um, ultimately, habit, tick off the things you need, then yep. get into your workout. And, it, yep. and I think the best way to look at it is how you're setting it. Do you have the license to get into your lifts? Yeah, nice. You know, um, I like have, that. have you ticked your boxes? Yep. Because if not, it's great for a physio clinic. You just keep come see me. Yeah, that's um, right. But if you've, if you've got your license of, you know, I've done these things and I'm ticking the boxes, I'm pain-free, look at deadlift. Um, we've got rich deadlifting, what, 200 today or what was it, 190? Two, uh, two million. 170, sorry, man, 170, sorry, bro. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, sorry, I'm but about, he, I'm it's about funny, to go out and It's funny, he's, oh, I watched him. He spent, I think, good 10, 15 doing thoracic drills, which he yep. needs for a deadlift. He did some hip drills. Yeah, that's exactly what you, exactly what you need to be doing. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. And so that's look, that's um, the three components that we really wanted to address today. We really wanted to make sure that you understand that the warm up is not the workout. You don't overcook it because it does uh, inhibit your ability to perform in your given sport, in your given, just like a professional athlete wouldn't cook themselves before doing a hundred meter sprint because they wouldn't be able to do their best effort, but they still need to warm up for it, you know? And uh, in the same token, don't underdo it, you know, especially if you're getting on. Uh, above the age of 30, the warm up is absolutely critical. I know all the young bucks in their 20s would be sitting here going, oh, you don't need to warm up. That's ridiculous, you know? Mm. You just wait. You just wait. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I'm only two years out of my twenties, and I started PTing at twenty. And man, I wish I knew what I knew. Yeah, now. yeah. Oh. Man, oh, look, I remember when I hit thirty-three. I just was like, why is my body just capitulating? You know, like yeah. it just feels like everything's just falling mm-hmm. apart. Richie said it as well. He, you know, he went through a period last year where he was in the in the hurt locker uh, quite a lot with little things flaring up. And you d- you really do have to change the way you train and start to really be conscientious about it. Uh, and you know, but then just remember that there is a, a blueprint to what you should be doing, you know, and, and, uh, it starts with always blood flow, always do a little bit of cardio to kick it off, whether that's a light, jo- uh, a, a, a quick short, jo- I don't like to say a sprint, like a running sprint, because you are really asking of your body quite high demanding stuff there. So jump on a spin bike or, a, uh, something that's going to be less impact. We use the horizontal running or the ski ergs or the bikes, the attack bikes up the back. A row is fine, you know, something that where you're not really going to be um, uh, at risk of straining a hammy or pulling an adductor or something like that. 60 seconds is plenty. You want to get your heart rate up. You want to be out of breath. Uh, and then, yeah, you get into your mobility and very specific to what you're going to be doing. If you're doing bench press, you should be doing mobility drills for the upper body. If you're doing squats, you should be doing mobility drills for the lower body. It's not stretching. Mobility and stretching are two totally different, entirely yep. different concepts. And then you want to be doing positioning and skills drills, you know, uh, specific to whatever you're about to play or do. 
uh, we fire up the rotator cuff and the core musculature and then get very specific to the movements we're doing. If it's squats, then we're doing a four, three, two, one warm up sequence. If it's bench press, same thing. And uh, if it's footy, you want to be drilling, kicking a ball. You want to be drilling, um, warming up your shoulders for tackles, you know, whatever it is that you're doing. And the only two reasons why you ever go outside of that blueprint is age. You'll extend everything a bit. Uh, to make sure that you feel prepared for the warm up. You know, we like to say warm up in 10 minutes or less is sufficient for most people until you're over the age of sort of 40 or 50. Then you've got to start really lengthening it. Or the final point, which we uh, were very lucky to have Nilesh on for to talk about, uh, is if you're working on an injury or a compromise mm. in, in the body. And then you might be doing specific stuff to your um, injury, your issue, your ailment, your compromise. And it's usually always some activation drills to, to address a weakness or a movement deficiency yep. and, uh, and or additional mobility work, yeah. you know. Just to add on to that, I, I don't want people to go walk away going, okay, cool, I've got to do my 15 minute warm up. Oh wait, I'm joining compromise, I'm gonna add another 15 minutes in. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. turn into a 30 minute thing. We just got to be smart here and get for a bang for our buck. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's I right. think that's a big takeaway. I do have, there's been a lot of times going, yeah, man, I do everything. I spent 35 minutes doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, then I'll go do the rehab exercises and that's another 30 minutes yeah. and then I'll do my work. So yeah. I think it's being about being tactical. Yeah. If you have a rehab day, do your rehab stuff. If you have a proper lift day, take yeah. your rehab stuff out of it and do what's needed for that day's focus or the day's goals. That's a really important point. And you um, uh, brushed on it over it before, which is about creating habits. And you, you know, exercise is all about habit. It's about ritual. And if you don't create rituals that are sustainable, then you're highly likely to quit them. And, and if you're needing to spend 35 minutes just to get yourself primed and then an extra 15 minutes on specific rehab stuff, just to start your hour workout so you're now in the gym for two hours the likelihood of you continuing to do that for a long period of time is, is buckley's you know yeah, it's not sustainable. sustainable so you've got to figure out a way of keeping it all efficient getting the most bang for your buck and you know i would i would strongly advise um if you if you're thinking oh man i need a little bit of extra warm-up uh, if you're doing the ums or not doing the the, the unified movement system at home workouts whatever um Get in touch with Nilesh, get in touch with Phil at ADPT Physio. What's the website? ADPTphysio.com? Um, ADPT.physio. Dot physio. ADPT.physio. Uh, these guys can do an online consult with you to help you out. They can, they can, there's all sorts of different ways. You can come in here to Unity Gym if you're in Australia or visiting and, uh, and have a, a hands-on session with them. Uh, even in the lockdown, uh, they're a, um, uh, what, what is it called? A, an essential, essential service. service so you, yep. you, that they're still seeing and still treating patients. And uh, it's highly valuable, highly valuable. And otherwise, if you're wondering, like, what does it look like? What is a, what is a, a, an ultra-efficient, ultimate workout uh, warm-up look like? Jump on the um, at-home workouts. We have a really, really great uh, routine that we do, even in the at-home workouts with zero equipment. The only thing we don't we do differently to our UMS gym program is we don't use the gymnastics rings and we don't use uh, body weight hanging because we assume that people don't have access to those things. So we take you through a really, really great body positioning, mobility drills. We do the the blood flow work. Uh, so you'll you'll see what these three components are, and you'll get a really good understanding of how it all comes together. It's a great opportunity 29 bucks it's worth that just for the workouts craig jenkins has just jumped on under kate's uh, <laughs> uh name you had us fooled there brother uh, <laughs> welcome to the stream better late than never but watch the replay this was a cracker i think i think there's a lot of value in all of this for everybody not just uh not just the old bucks uh who really really need to warm up but everybody yeah. you know you start it early because if you get into your routine you'll just, it just flies on really well and you set yourself up to win ultimately yeah, mate, mate as as will pointed out you know i've been training intensely since i was i was a kid essentially and i i bloody wish I, mm. I bloody wish that I knew how to warm up properly yeah. back then, you know, because I really, really caused myself a lot of unnecessary trauma. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that, you know, you get all of that has an accumulative effect, just like, um, just like overload on the body when you're working out accumulates and, 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 and creates an ad adaptation injury <laughs> accumulates mm, yeah, yeah, and creates scar tissue and, yeah. uh, and, and movement compromise. So yeah, good stuff guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. 
um, Nilesh. Thank, thank you, you. Will. No uh, guys, we're going to be on in about 20 minutes. If you're part of the UMS uh, online coaching, we're going to be going to the Facebook group uh, live uh, for your weekly group coaching call. Otherwise, remember, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel here, and you've got about 12 hours to grab the UMS at-home workouts phase five for 29 bucks. It's going to revert to the 97 uh, regular price after that. Uh, we'll make sure that we throw a link in the description for you. Take care, everyone. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. We've got overload methods, intra and interset overload methods coming at you next week. You're going to love next week's podcast. Take care. See you guys. See you later. Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept what you're going to have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that It's far. the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there. It's not the intensity. There's no shortcuts to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. It's the gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.